Hello, welcome to Miniature Arms. My name's Stuart and welcome to a painting tutorial. This one is a 15mm scale Flames of War by Battlefront British Comet tank. Now the British uh, has just had a bit of a new release with the release of the Bulge book and starter army and a few other miniatures as well. Um, this miniature came in that starter and I can resist painting it up now even though it's uh, for a future project. Now, as you see the miniature is prepared already with a Xenophil pre-highlight. If you're unsure what that is um, I'll pop a little link in now for a video I've done about that and it just helps the painting process as I'm going to be airbrushing in thin layers which will hopefully pick up all of that pre-highlighting that you can see on the miniature there. Now the first paint I'm using is model colour bronze green um, and now this is thinned about 50% with water, you can use thinners as well and you'll see as I apply it with thin layers over the miniature some of that pre-highlight will, will show through giving me a sort of almost a guide of where to highlight later on but also doing some of the lead work and preventing me to, to needing to do too many multiple layers of highlighting afterwards. For colour choices, I've used the Colours of War guidebook. It's a publication by Battlefront who make Flames of War, um, but it also looks like it's in conjunction with Vallejo and all the, the paint choices in the book are Vallejo and it's a really, really good publication if you don't have it already. Next up is a 50-50 mix of bronze green and Russian uniform, both from model colour, again thinned about 50% with water. Um, and this is the first highlight that I'm doing on the tank after the base layer. And I'm trying to leave some of the original green there and where the pre-highlight has shown through, that's why I'm trying to aim this mix of paint for this first subtle highlight. Now to really bring out that top highlight and make it pop a little more, I'm using model colour Russian uniform on its own. And again, this is thinned 50% with water and it just really, really gives a nice transition from top to bottom shade. Now I'm using some contrast Garrick Zua and I'm going to use this a little bit like an ink. So I thinned it slightly, so it's probably about 80-20 um, 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 Garrick Zua to water. And I'm just reinforcing the shadows a little bit here. And because it's a sort of a, a, a greasy dark brown colour, it, it aids with the weathering look as well. Um, it's, you've got to be quite careful here. Yeah, and quite gentle with your airbrush. Now, if you are newer to airbrushing and, and um, you th you're worried your control's not quite there, you could mask a little bit, or you could apply this as, as, as a bit of a pin wash or sort of just paint it in. Now, I'm also using it on the tracks as well, um, just to give it a very dark um, sort of base brown to work from. Again, you can paint this all on with the brush if you wanted and you'll see in a few moments that I do touch up uh, the tracks with, with a standard paintbrush. And here we are with that uh, same colour again and I'm just going to fill in the areas that were a little bit too close to the model to do with the airbrush. So I'm just making sure I'm filling in on all the tracks and giving them that same really dark um, base layer of brown. Now it is a contrast so it is still showing some of the other colour through which is giving a little bit of a natural highlight which is partly why I use contrast paints for 
this kind of job rather than just using a, a flat brown colour. Now back to model colour, and this is some German beige, um, and I'm using this to pick out the, you know, I don't know the proper name for this, but there is a, what looks like a sort of tarpaulin-y, almost leather look in some pictures, um, part at the front of the turret, um, near the, the, the moving part um, for the elevation of, of, of the, the main gun. Um, so please do pop in the comments if you know what its name is. Um, you don't see that on, on the other uh, models of tanks and things. It's just something I've noticed on this one, but I think it's quite cool. So I'm using this as a, a, a base colour because it has a kind of browny, leathery look. And I'll, and I'll add some um, contrast colours later on to give it that look and a short highlight later in the video. So let me know what, what it's properly called. And continuing the contrast theme, this is Black Legion. This is the darker of the two blacks that they do. And I'm using this in place of a black paint. You could just use a standard black paint here. Again, I just find it goes on really nice and smoothly. It's very easy to control. Um, and you can use it straight out of the tub rather than having to thin at all. And I'm just playing, painting on the black areas of the wheels. Also the machine guns. Now I'm going to use a little base grey sear here just to paint in the handles of the tools on the tank and the reason I'm doing this is I'm going to use a contrast paint rather than paint them in flat um, and this is just a really nice quick underpainting way of doing it. And now for that contrast colour and I'm using Gore Grunt of Fur. Now for the metal parts of the tools, I'm using black metal and I'll also use a tiny bit of that as a dry brush on the end of the machine guns later, but very, very subtle because you don't want them to look metallic rather than blued. And now for the shading on that unnamed canvasy leathery area at the front and I'm using Agoras Dunes and it's somewhere in the middle um, of the kind of browny, yellowy, um, ochreish shades that they do, and I think find it works nicely against the green and pops a little bit. You could go darker or lighter depending on your preference, really, depending on what images you've seen. Um, and I like to go with this one. And there we are with the the base coat or colour on absolutely everything including the multi-tone green for the base of the tank and you could absolutely game with it like this like you could with all of my painting stages about midway through but I want to add some weathering. But before you can add the weathering you need to prepare your miniature so I have gloss coated it um, with an airbrush for protection and I have also taken the liberty to add the decals at this stage because they work perfectly over gloss and then applied gloss over the top of them to protect them. I'll pop a little link in now for a tutorial of how to apply decals if you've never done it before. It's only a short video but it will talk you through for the whole process and it cuts a good 5-10 minutes out of this video and keeps it a little bit shorter. Now for the weathering process, I'm actually using some soil works, which is sort of ready mixed oil wash from Scale 75. This is the grease color. Um, you can mix your own oil washes. I do a lot myself, especially for larger models for 28 mil tanks, especially for, for 40K and Horus Heresy tanks and things, which are absolutely massive. 
and would go through these pots very quickly but I really like the soil works range and this colour is just perfect and I've, I've always got a few in my uh, my collection and I tend to use it for most of my tanks at this scale. And what I'm doing here is trying to do a bit of a pin wash, letting it run into the recesses. Not only does it provide some natural shadow, it also gives us some really nice kind of um, green into grain dirty look and I will paint some streaks and things on later so I just gently work my way around the miniature now the gloss surface allows the oil paint to run into all the gaps and things don't worry if it, it spreads a little bit further than you wanted because the, the joys of oil paints is that they take ages and ages to dry um, days really and you can remove them move them around and use white spirit just to kind of clean up and tidy areas as you'll see me doing shortly Having just watched me apply a lot of oil everywhere, now is the tidy up stage and I'm using some Artist White Spirit and a clean brush. Now you can wait till the oils are fully dry or you can leave it till they're slightly tacky. Miniatures of this scale, I'm quite happy to work with it wet because I really want some control. I try to remove the pooling with a clean brush, a bit of White Spirit, keep drying it off on a bit of spare towel. But I also like to paint in some streaks and things where I can as well. And this can be achieved in a couple of ways. It can be achieved just by painting streaks downwards through the area that's been covered by the oil wash, basically leaving cleaner areas, which slowly builds up a little bit of interest. It might not be that easy to see on the tank. Uh, but you can also paint it back in with streaks directly using the same oil wash, and you'll see me do that in a little while. So at this stage, I'm putting streaks back in using the same grease oil wash. I've gone around and tidied up the miniature mostly, but I've almost taken a little bit too, too much paint off in places or oil wash off in places. As you can see there, I'm just going around and painting the odd streak back in. If it's a bit thick, just like there, I can use a little bit of clean white spirit, which I also have open at the same time, just to go around and tidy up. And this is the beauty of this, as opposed to using something like a Games Workshop wash. It's once you've applied it, it dries very quickly. You've got just loads and loads and loads of time to work with oil paints. And you could come back to it the next day, as long as you haven't sealed it again, come back to it the next day and reactivate it with a little bit of, of white spirit and remove it. It's, it's, it's that good to work with. Now working the same way as I do with the oil paints, I'm using some AK Interactive Rust Streaks and this is an enamel wash. Um, I, I just like to add a different colour normally. These tanks wouldn't have been super rusty, they would have been maintained. But I do want to add more than just the one colour of oil wash. So I think a slightly different colour brown is the way to do it. So whether it's rust or whether it's just some other dirt or something, I don't really mind. Um, it's all about the way it looks for me. So I'm just painting in the odd streak here or there. And I'm treating it exactly the same way as I do the, the, the oil um, paint itself. And I'll come back with some clean white spirit, thin the line, add a little bit more, play around with it. And if you don't like it, you can wipe it off completely. It's, it's really that good. So the next stage of weathering is some AK dirt and dust deposits. This is a weathering set with three different colours in and I will be continuing to use, if you watch my other tutorials, the uh, the brown earth deposit, which is what I'm using for most of my kind of non-deserty, um, so northern Europe kind of things. Now what I'm doing here, a little bit off camera there, but what I'm doing here is just applying it in splots, again in a similar area that I was applying the original oil washes, so anywhere dust and dirt might get caught up so under tools in crevices that kind of thing i'm putting it on fairly rough at the moment still trying to keep it fairly close to the area i want it to go in um, and just on knowing that i'll come back in a few moments with some clean white spirit and really feather it and thin it out and remove any strong brush marks
And here I am doing just that. So I've got clean white spirit now. I'm applying it to the areas where the, the dust deposits has gone on and I'm just feathering out, removing where it's too thick and just making it look a lot more natural. Um, and when it dries, it just looks like the, the, the tank's been out in the, in the elements and any dirt and dust and things has got sort of dried into the, the gaps and the crevices and things and it looks pretty realistic. And here I am applying the same method to the wheels. I'm making a little bit thicker on the wheels because they obviously touch the ground and have a lot more dried in mud and dirt and things like that. But once that's slopped on thick, I'll go back with the clean white spirits and basically do the same thing. Wash it away, thin it out until it just remains right down in the crevices. And you can see there, adding it to the tracks as well because it does a fantastic job on those. There I am applying the final finishing bits of tidy up and now I need to leave this and I left this overnight to dry before applying a matte coat of varnish to get rid of all that shine from the gloss varnish. With it dry the next day I can come back to the final weathering and I'm going to do some gentle dry brushing with Game Air Silver. This is quite a bright silver and I've got a very old thin brush and I've got a very tiny amount on the brush. I'm just gently teasing it around the edges of the metal where paint may have been worn off for use. Um, this gives you a bit of a highlight as well, so it makes the miniature pop a little bit, and a little bit around the wheels where they might have um, brushed against rocks or something like that. Um, I do like my tanks to look quite, quite old and weathered, but not to the point of um, ridiculousness. Um, so it might be a little bit more weather to some people's taste, but then you can just miss this stage out if you didn't want to, to add it. I don't do any chipping with silver. I don't think that's particularly realistic, but I do like the effect that this gives just on edges of, of sheer metal. And you can see I continue this on the turret itself and I just really think it helps provide a little bit of definition to something that's so small, helps the miniature pop and stand out and defines the, the lines and things that help you identify different parts of the miniature. Now it is some time for some chipping, and I'm going to be using my favourite for that, which is Rhinox Hide from, from Games Workshop from Citadel. Bit of foam on uh, in, a, in some tweezers, a little bit dipped on, the paint dipped on, most of it taken off on a paper towel, and just the odd, very, very gentle dab. Um, and I, I wouldn't go too far on a miniature of this size, and that could look like spots of mud, could just look like where paint has been removed as a bit of primer underneath. Whatever it looks like, I think it looks cool. Now, while I've weathered that leathery, canvasy part of the front of the turret, um, I did just want to make it pop a little bit. So I'm just using a little bit of dark sand from Model Color, just to highlight very gently on the edges where the, the crease mark is. Now, I'm using a little bit of um, pigment here, so it's Vallejo Light Center, and I'm just going to brush it in around the tracks, and I blow most of this off. Now, you can seal your pigment powders, and it's often advised to, um, but I'm brushing so much off that I I'm not going to worry too much. Um, I've done this for years without sealing it. As long as you're not trying to leave it on the surface of something, um, you'll be surprised how well it just stays within the crevices by itself. And I'm just trying to do is add a little bit of extra kind of value to it. Now you could have done this with that that dirt, dust and dirt deposits um, and thinned it down. But I just really like the effect that rubbing over something really really dry it adds a different texture to it and that makes it a little bit more kind of real and tangible I think um, but do your own method for these things if you if you don't want to do that and by all means fix it but I do find fixing it changes the properties of it a little bit and tends to hide the subtlety of it Now for the final stage on this tank it's just Vallejo thick mud European mud and now this is more of an effect in the base um, so there are kind of 
paint and sand mixtures which you may want to base your miniatures with um, but this is more something I think is a deer armor effect rather than sort of the base layer first um, and if you apply this quite thick it looks like wet mud um, if you play it quite subtle it um, dries so it looks like dried in mud I think it's quite versatile so I'm just going around and adding some into the tracks and sat on some onto the sort of skirts and things around the side of the tank And there we are, all done. Um, I think it was pretty cool. I've had loads of fun doing it. I absolutely love painting tanks. I've probably got lots of bits wrong, um, so I'm sure people will tell me in the comments. I like to learn, so please do do tell me. Give me the official names of things where I've got it wrong. I think I've got the decor placings right or almost right um, with use of a little bit of help from, from Harriet Fogger Wars. Got some very good videos on British decor placements. I watched those. The Colours of War book's very, very good and so's the British Bulge Army book as well from Flames of War. So they're quite good. Um, and I wanted to stick to something that I had decals. So um, we, uh, I think they're right, but um, I'm sure there's something missing that I could have done. But hey-ho, I've had fun doing it anyway. If you have enjoyed the video, please do consider giving us a like and subscribe to the channel. It definitely helps me out. I hope I've pitched it at a level where if you uh, don't airbrush that you could have done the first few stages with a rattle can and then maybe copied the weathering stages, which I think as much as they look advanced in many ways are really, really easy um, and a lot of fun. Um, so I do think that you can kind of pick certain techniques and things and, and add them to your own painting style rather than having to copy the whole tutorial. Some people just don't like to use airbrushes, which is absolutely understandable. There are lots of other painting tutorials on the channel, including a growing number of Flames of War ones now if you're into your World War II stuff. But if you like other things as well, please do check out my other stuff, so Epic Napoleonics, American Civil War, even some Middle Earth, etc, etc. Go and have a look and see if there's anything else to your fancy. But anyway, thank you very much for watching. Take care, and I'll catch you soon.